Hey YouTubers, Facebookers and Instagrammers, so I'm here today to make a little video about whether a working cocker or Springer Spaniel is the right dog for you. Now, if you're watching this video, is it possible that you haven't seen a lot of my other content? So I would encourage you to go and watch that uh, maybe after you've watched this video. I'll put a link in my description to a couple of videos that I feel are quite relevant. So if you're thinking about buying a working Springer or Spaniel or working Cocker Spaniel, I think there's some really important bits to try and understand. Now, without sounding sarcastic, I always say to a lot of my cli uh, clients that there is a hint in the title, working. So working Springer Spaniel, working Cocker. Meaning that these dogs are still right this moment being bred to do a job. It's not like a lot of old dogs that were bred to do jobs in the past those jobs have now long gone, okay? So the thing with the working cockers is still being bred to this day, right now, to do a job. It was never bred to be a domestic dog. That doesn't mean that it can't be a good one, okay? But it has certain issues that come with that, okay? If you go and buy a, a domestically bred dog, a dog that is literally just being bred to be a pet, Dalmatian, a Staffy, a Poodle, golden retriever, fantastic pet dog. You don't inherently get all the issues that you get with a working dog. So the number one issue with these dogs is that they are being bred to hunt, okay? When I say hunt, is into fine game. So that might be rabbits, hares, pheasants, pigeons, partridges, etc. okay? So their job, their brain is telling them that they want to hunt around to find things. Now, if you let these dogs explore and express their natural instincts over time, a lot of what their brain is telling them to do is to hunt, find, chase, potentially catch, kill, and then maybe even eat. Now our job as a gun dog trainer, if we're training it to do the job that it's been bred to do, is that we're there to enhance and suppress certain parts of that instinct. Our job is there to enhance the find part, suppress the chase, enhance the go get, and then suppress the damage. But if you allow that dog to naturally express itself through mistakes that can be made in those early months, then you can be on all, uh, a huge amount of trouble. If you go and buy a domestically bred dog like some of the other breeds I suggested, largely very, 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 very small percentage of those dogs are gonna have that innate drive to go and find. So really understanding this breed is, is really, really crucial. And it's the same issues that I see again and again and again. So if you're looking for a dog that requires minimal amount of interaction and training, you don't want to have to spend a lot of money and time on it, I would say a Spaniel is probably not the right choice. Golden Retriever every day going, uh, sorry, every single day long, I would go for a Golden Retriever if I just want an easy going pet. But admittedly, they are quite a bit bigger than a Spaniel. So if it's the size element, then I understand why you might not go for that, but you've got to understand what you're going to get for that package. So I get messages every single day of the week, people saying to me, hey, Chris, we bought a Spaniel. We found it quite easy to start with, maybe. They didn't have too many problems. Nine times out of 10, they'll say the dog is amazing in the house. Couldn't agree more. They are, they can be fantastic in the house. Still certain things that I like to do with them differently from more of a domestically bred dog. When I say domestically bred, I don't mean like, as in like a, a working Spaniel is still a domestic dog. It's not a wolf, but it still has those characteristics that get them into, uh, characteristics that get them into trouble, which most other breeds don't have. So that chase element, you get in a few Labradors as well, working breed ones. It's quite a lot of the pointers can be a bit like that as well. They've got their own issues as well, but predominantly it is the Spaniels. And with the Cocker boom that there is in place, 90, probably 80 to 85% of my clients are Cockers. So often I refer to the, uh, the Cockers being those ones. And you know, and they, they can be a little bit more difficult than the Springers, which often people find surprising. Cockers always have to question everything, whereas the Springer is much more likely to say, yes, boss. Still has its problems, but much more likely to say, yes, boss, than the Cocker is always thinking, mm, I think there might be a better option for me here. So they're great in the house, but as I said, the issues tend to be once they're external. So a lot of the time people may say to me, hey, we have a super active lifestyle, we do a lot of walking. And although that sounds like the right thing to do, that does set a few alarm bells in my head. 
because often it means people are too much in a hurry to get them out there. And as I said, often three, four, five, six months, people are doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing and they're not doing the things that they should be doing. Without getting too heavily into this, because I've covered this in lots of other videos, I want to keep my Spaniels really on blinkers in the early stage and I want to work really hard on some very small bits and doing an awful lot of avoidance of stuff that most people, their human, pre uh, human branding is telling them is a lovely thing to do. As, and I've said in other videos, your dog will lap that up, will, will not repay you with good behavior. And that's the bit to understand. So of an overview, is a working Spaniel the good, uh, good right dog for you to get? As I said, if you want an easy dog to train, you don't want a lot of hassle and uh, you don't want to be chasing your dog down a wood on a wet Wednesday afternoon, getting very frustrated, then the cock is probably not the dog for you or spring is not the dog for you. But if you want some hard work graft or you do want a shooting dog, uh, don't want to forget that because a lot of my clients are shooting people. If you want a beating dog or a picking up dog, great. If you want a peg dog though, do not buy a Spaniel. Buy yourself a Labrador or a Retriever, okay? Not a spring or a spaniel, they're not designed to take the pressures of being a peg dog, okay? But if you do want to, a rough shooting dog, picking up dog, or beating dog, then they are great. So hopefully I've covered a few things there. Is the spaniel the right dog for you? If you want to put a lot of effort in, you've got a bit of time, and you're patient, then great. If you're not that type of person, don't underestimate how important that is, if you're not that type of person, get a different type of dog. Don't get me wrong, I love my Spaniels. I often get friends say to me, hey Chris, we're thinking about getting a Spaniel. And I'll say, knowing probably knowing them, say, get yourself a Golden Retriever or a Labrador. And they say, hey Chris, you love Spaniels? So I said, yep. And I know what it takes. And it's a lot of frustration at times. So do yourself a favor. I'm not selling them, am I? But it's the truth, okay? So if you want a bit of effort and hard work, get yourself a Spaniel. If not, get yourself something else. Anyway, I hope that's been some help. Catch you later, guys.